Coming to another AMI types. Now this is a very important slide you need to focus a little more. Amazon is having a two kinds of AMIs. EBS back and the instant store back AMIs. In the EBS back AMI, what would happen? Say EBS, if you remember we talk about the volume today. This volume is nothing but an EBS volume which offers you a persistent storage. So if you run an instance, it may have an ephemeral storage which is a temporary and as long as the instance terminates all your data would be lost since it's an ephemeral storage. To make the data persistence Amazon provides a volume called the EBS volume. Now this EBS volume would always have a persistent data. So if you launch an instance which is having a ephemeral storage you want to make some data persistent you can do one thing you attach this EBS volume to that and make your data persistent. So even if your instance terminates this volume would still be there and your data would not be lost. So EBS gives you much better the persistent storage and we have a complete session almost one hour of the EBS volume today after this EC2. So we'll go more depth about the EBC, EBS after that. But coming back to EC2, there is a AMI type directly available. What would happen in that scenario when you launch an instance it would always have an EBS volume attached to that as a root device only. So here EBS volume is always attached as a root device only. So whatever data you are storing is always persistent. There is no ephemeral storage at all available on this instance. So all the data is always persistent with the EBS. So even if your instance gets terminated, you can configure that your EBS volume is not terminated. It still stays there and whenever you terminate, so where, what happens in that scenario? That whenever your root volume is there, it's not terminated. So you launch new instance and attach that EBS volume to that and you will have all the data available. So EBS based AMI gives you a much better persistence, much better control also. In a control way, this is much faster to boot. So this is a very very fast AMI to boot. Second thing, when this type of AMI is launched, Amazon automatically creates an Amazon EBS volume and attach as a root volume. All the data on local storage is always persistent with this EBS volume. Only caveat or the uh, warning for you would be when you create this there would be uh, all the data so what happens you launch an instance and that is having an EBS volume attached to that. This EBS volume cost you in addition to your instance running cost. Now this EBS volume cost you very minimal very minimal means it cost you something 5 cents per GB so per month so for example you created a 10 cents volume sorry 10 GB volume it would cost you an additional 50 cents only 50 cents for whole month so total one month you would be charged extra 50 cents only for this EBS volume but you get tremendous advantages with that and I'll show you all these advantages in a while so to in a nutshell this EBS back instances or rather I would say EBS back AMIs we start with the AMI then it becomes the instance in the EBS back AMI when you launch an instance an EBS volume is by default attached as a root volume so it would always be persistence. Second model is instance store back AMI people call it S3 as a popularly so I have written S3 but I would always say use the word instance store back AMI because it's uh, Amazon calls it instance store back AMI only. <laughs> now in the instance store back AMI what would happen when you launch an instance it would have by default 1 GB, 2, 1 terabyte, 2 terabytes, some 500 GB of the storage by default attached to that and that is everything in a ephemeral storage. So as long as instance is running that storage is there as soon as your data is instance is terminated all your data would be lost. So for example you have launched an instance you deployed a database there. Now what would happen in that scenario if the instance terminates all your data would be lost also so that's a challenge. In that scenario you can do one thing you can attach an additional EBS volume here and you store all your data to that EBS volume only. So even if your instance gets terminated, your data would not be lost. 
but in this scenario the CBS volume is not a root volume it's an additional volume it's like you have attached a additional hard disk to this and we will see more in EBS in a while but to understand again in a nutshell instant storeback AMI would give you a persistent store will not give you persistent storage because all data is a ephemeral storage and as long as the instance get terminated all your data would be lost now why in ABS back AMI is more popular these days because what would happen I'll come to all questions in a while when you launch an instance general instance would be in a pending state then it becomes running and so this is a life cycle for instance to a back AMI it would be in a running state and then it would be in a shutting down state so Amazon would charge you Amazon would charge you for all the cost of this running only this time only Amazon would cost you so this is your running cost where Amazon would be charging you when you terminate all your data would be lost and instance would be terminated also and Amazon would not charge you at all in the EBS back AMI there is a little difference here in the EBS back AMI instance would be in a running cost and instance can be stopped also stop means it can be like a hibernate kind of a mode so it can be stopped also when you stop the instance it would not cost you it would not cost you this running cost so running instance running cost is only for time when instance is running when you stop it it will not charge you at all but there is a some additional cost which is shown here that is a EBS storage cost which is very very minimal so we compare the case in a practical case somebody just asked me a question so I take their case only somebody wants to run an instance four hours a day for example right if I select the case of this what would happen my instance for example cost me 10 cents per hour we just take an example here my instance cost me 10 cents per hour so in that scenario every day I cannot stop the instance so my instance would be running 24 by 7 so it would be costing me dollar 2.4 per day so over the whole month it would be costing me 72 dollars if I go to this scenario in this scenario I would be running instance only for 4 cents I take the higher side also I created a 50 GB volume just take an example 50 GB which is a higher 50 GB storage I have created or we just take 100 GB also just for your understanding we created a 100 GB volume which is a very higher anyway so if in this scenario what would happen when I stop the instance it would be costing me only for 4 cents an hour so here it would be charging me only 16 cents per day not the 2.4 sorry 40 cents a day not the completely 2.4 dollars right so over the period over the whole month it would be costing me how, how much only twelve dollars right it would be chargeable only twelve dollars to me now if I take the storage cost of hundred GB this is coming to five dollars only so my total storage cost is twelve plus five total Amazon cost is seventeen dollars only this means I get hundred GB volume I can stop the instance I'm not paying for that and it's still saving me fifty dollars a month so if you have a case I would tell you frankly even if you have a case where you have to stop the instance for one to two hours or so you can use this case EBS back instance apart from that EBS back instance is having a much more advantage is that when you run the instance it is very easy to create an AMI with that it just right click and create AMI it's very faster to boot uh, it supports a stop state so that's why the in 90% cases people are using EBS back instance only now I'll show, take a few questions and then we'll take a break okay so production system use EBS yes that is a recommended option for sure if you want to use for the instance store in some cases then you need to show that all your data which is requirement persistence you should move it to the uh, EBS volume as an additional EBS volume 
did they charge uh, my other question did they charge for EBS extra or it will come with easy to pricing I think much I just answered that question right it would be uh, charging extra and I explained the cost also right so any other question uh, Chitty is a question what about if some client wants to move to AWS to CSC what do you mean by CSC can you say yeah any other questions one thing also you need to understand over here which I say in the previous slide if you start and stop an instance multiple times in an hour it would be charging you as per that hourly basis so for example you started an instance at 9 a.m. stop at 9.15 for example due to any reason then you started back at 9.30 and stop at 9.45 then you started back at 9.50 and stop at 10 a.m. In that scenario, Amazon would charge you for three hours cost because every time you stop, it would round off this to the nearest hour and charge you. And you would say, no, no, that's a challenge, right? I Frankly, I don't see it as a practical case where you start and stop every 15 minutes. If you have, unless you are testing something over there or you need something, you should not do this why don't you keep on running an instance for a whole hour but this is an understanding you need to know that every time you start and stop it would be charging you extra for this